All right, and it is time now for better food. You don't, if you don't have your menu set yet for the big day, don't have any fear because maybe a lot of you are first time cooks out there. You can't go to grandma's house. Well, Chef Plum is joining us now with an inspiring take on a classic Thanksgiving stuffing. Hi, Chef. Hey, what's up, guys? How are you this afternoon? And please don't tell me there's going to be Brussels sprouts in this one because I'm already out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to stop there. I was making Brussels sprout stuffing. Shoot, I, I got to change everything around now. Kara, I want to show you guys first, like through COVID, kind of how inventive we've become. I want you guys to see my, you know, I have my, my cool overhead camera I yeah. use. Check this out. It's hung up by a duster. I just thought you guys might want to see that. Wait, it's, it's hung, hung up by, by a duster what? on what the pendants. That? That's my overhead camera that I use here when I do demos yeah. with you guys. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Is that, a, it looks like a fishing pole. Like what's it, what's it attached to? It's a duster attached to our pendant oh, on our duster. island. a <laughs> duster, like a Swiffer. Listen, okay. <laughs> that's it. Get yourself a Swiffer, a little GoPro, and some duct tape, and you can do anything. That's fantastic. Even make it amazing. I love it. Okay, so this is a Cajun so, uh, and Dewy stuffing, so it's kind of a sausage stuffing. That's right. Yeah, a little bit. So, yeah, it was definitely it's a sausage stuffing, and Dewey sausage is in there. So uh, you know, I think of the Thanksgiving time of year as like the Super Bowl for me. Uh, it's a time to make some really cool food. And I want to show you how I make one of my favorite stuffings, the Cajun Andouille stuffing. So I'm going to switch to my, my overhead camera right here. You can see I've got this uh, little burner now, so I'm super fancy. I'm going to light this up. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off by throwing just a little bit of butter in here to melt, right? I want a little bit of butter to melt in that pan and just a pinch of olive oil in the pan as well. Helps keep the butter from burning. All right, so this this is easy. Listen, I love doing easy things, and this is super easy. So love easy. we're gonna start I'm big on easy. Yeah, uh, this is what uh, this is carrots, celery, and onions right here, and us chefs call that mirepoix. Right, it's a fancy word for carrots, celery, and onion. We're gonna put that in the pan, let that start cooking. This is why this is so easy because you put it all in one pan. Then we're gonna take. I have some uh, diced uh, peppers here, red, green, yellow. Just pop them in there, right? Little uh, bell peppers. And the good thing is if we're and not as good with our knife skills as you are, I've seen them sold already. All that's already sold and chopped at the store. <laughs> this may or may not be pre-chopped uh, bell peppers. I am not at liberty to say. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> uh, and then what I've got here is a little bit of andouille sausage, okay? Andouille sausage, it comes in links the way I buy it. I just split them into quarters and then cut them down in pieces, right? To get little pieces kind of like, like that. You can see oh, a little small piece. Oh, that's how you do that. that you right in quarters. Pan. Okay, I never knew that. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy. So I'm going to just mix this guy all around in here. Let it get nice and happy. And what you want to do is just let this render down. Let that fat from that andouille sausage get into those vegetables. That's what makes it taste delicious. That's where that beautiful flavor comes from. I'm going to throw a pinch of salt in here. I like to season as I go. I know a lot of people say season at the end. I season as I go. Yeah, so I'm going to move this out of the way and let this cook down for a minute and show you guys how we're going to get the rest of this done. This is, this is an incredibly easy recipe. I'm excited to show you. So next thing we got to put in here is this. This is our wonderful herbs. I've got some sage. I've got some rosemary. One trick I like to do is put a sprinkle of salt on top of the herbs when I'm cutting on the cutting board. Kara, do you know what that does? What? It keeps your herbs from uh, staining your cutting board, and it keeps huh. everything together so they don't fly everywhere when you're cutting it. Wait, if you just put salt that? on them? Just a tiniest little pinch of salt. Look how it's holding mine together. See that? Can you see it on the overhead camera? Yeah. Wow. I'm kind of holding everything together. <laughs> what a cool so now tip. I'm going to take these herbs. I'm going to put those in the pan behind me, too. Just okay. toss them in there. Okay. So this is the fun part. So every Thanksgiving morning here at my house, we get up, and I have bread, baguettes, things like this, baguettes, that we bought the night before, and I leave it sitting out and let it get hard and crusty, right? You want yeah. hard bread for this. Yep. You can yeah. see. And me and the girls, uh, we tear the bread up like this and just throw it into the bowl, right? Just tear it up. So have the kids. You can have them tear the bread up for you. Uh, you can act like it's a fun family tradition, or you can use you know, your kids as slave labor to tear apart your bread for you in the morning when you're making Thanksgiving you know, dinner for You know, my aunt people. always had us do that. We usually, she made us do it the night before, but I remember yep. that. And it was fun. All the cousins would rip the bread. Yeah, that's what you do. You rip it all up, get it nice and, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be giant, you know, big pieces or small pieces. There's really no right or wrong, because what happens is, this is what's going to absorb that amazing mixture we put in that pan, right? So I've got that nice and torn up there. I use some of these little white bread pieces too, just kind of tear this up. The ends are the best, these little crispy pieces on the end. Those are the best pieces as well. You want to put those in there. So I'm making about a half pan. I tend to make a lot of things for Thanksgiving using these pans, okay? These are just yeah. holdable, oh, easy. Yeah, yeah. Yes, no you cleanup. Can take stuff out of it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So what we're going to do now we got the bread. We've got our sausage mixture. Let's bring that back over here so you guys can see it on our fancy burner. There we go. And I didn't even spill it, Kara. How about that? 
was going to toss this up. I think I might have actually made this for you guys one time before, Kara, years and years ago, and I think your family loved it. I'm sure so we did. Once upon up. a time when we had large gatherings, Chef Plum would come <laughs> and help us, and now there's only four of us this year, Chef, but thank you. I, I know, can like, learn I know. remotely. <laughs> So now we're going to, just to speed this up, we're going to add a little bit of chili powder to it. I do about a tablespoon of chili powder. I'm going to add one more little pinch of salt. And then we're going to add about a half a cup or so of our turkey stock, just our pre-bought turkey stock, just like this. We're going to just pour some of that in there. To deglaze the bottom of the pan, what happens is you get that little crispy stuff on the bottom of the pan, and that's delicious. You want to make sure you keep that, right? So that's the best way to pull it off the bottom of the pan is by adding some stock to it. So here we go. This is getting happy in the pan. I'm going to move this over, and we're going to get our pan and set it up. That's literally the hardest part about doing it. What we just did, that's it. That's it. So now, that's it. I'm going to put some gloves on now so I don't gross my kids out because they're sitting here doing schoolwork right now and they're watching me. <laughs> and if I put my hands on something, they're going to be like, oh. So here's what we do. Mix it up with my gloves on. I'm going to pour this right into my bowl, just like that. I'm going to add Look a little that. bit of half a cup of stock, right? And then we take it and mix it up just like this. Isn't it hot? <laughs> Don't burn yourself. Uh, uh, no, well, I, just, I, just, I just put stock in there, so it's not as hot as it looks. Okay. And then we're going to put it into our pan, just like that. This is going to take about 35, 40 minutes in the oven. And once, when it comes out, let me show you what it looks like. I got one in the oven right now. Oh, man. Uh, Ow, and that is hot. I there you ready. go. Look at that. Ready? Look at the inside of this. Look at this. Look how delicious that looks. That look looks that. amazing. Look how delicious that looks, Oh, my right? gosh. Why are you not bringing it to us? That is beautiful. I'm, <laughs> I'm on the way right now. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Shoot me a DM on Instagram, at Chef underscore Plum, and we'll tell you all about this. It's fantastic. And don't forget to check out Season on WNPR. Thank you, Chef. Oh, everything he makes is delicious. I Thank you. I love the stuff. Happy love Thanksgiving. The stuff. Happy Thanksgiving. Yep. All right. I love that tip. I'll have to put salt on the herbs from now on. He did teach me. He was the one who taught me how to chiffon them properly. But anyway...